All right. Excellent. Oh my God! What is, is that? A real picture? Is that a real picture? It, it's a real picture, but it's wait. I wonder how like, good it gets. It's actually pretty good. Is that a green? Is because your wall is green? Why is, it red? Why is mine red? What? All right. Okay. So we only have thirty minutes. All right. All right. All right. Let's go. All right, let's go. So this is The Unseen by Quasimodo. Let's see what I wrote for this. Well, all right. How about this? So what was um what was your first thoughts like after you finished it? What was the first thing you thought about it? Um, I'll go first. All right, you got so it. So off the first listen, um it felt yeah, I before I listened to it, I saw it was 60 minutes and I was like, okay, this should go like a regular album. This should go um smooth but at the end of it by like the last five tracks i was pretty fatigued um i thought there was a lot of fat in the beginning and the end of the album so it just made it like a, a more drawn out listen in my opinion it was a long slow burn for me yeah i agree i agree i agree that the i don't think the beginning was or maybe maybe it just took you a while to like get into like how it would be for the most of the album because i thought the beginning was the best like the be the first like five or six were like the best songs i think but near the end yeah i can definitely see how it slowed down like they started to run out or he started to run out yeah, yeah definitely. No, pretty much after the song with med it was yeah was after that it's kind of just like they're just a couple like the ideas that the ideas seem totally like i don't know they seem totally thrown together like the unseen too like wasn't that song he's like people be like quasimodo got so much soul yo like People be like, yo, yeah, or was, something like that. Was he, he was reaching <laughs> heavy with his raps, and you could tell that he was like, maybe it was like a rough draft with his raps. Uh, on the, I like, think all of them. The I think that's just like it. a style. Like, yeah. like, it, And none of his raps really like stood. Like, I don't remember any of the lines. Like, to be honest, like, I don't remember. A, yeah. I've listened to it three or four times, and I don't remember a line. Not that that's yeah. like t- totally a terrible thing. He's just not that prolific. Scott, what are your thoughts? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I, like, was listening to it while... while I was doing some work, and I felt like I was doing work for days on end because it took me, like, a while, a lot of repetitive, um, like, even raps and uh, production. But <clears throat> I thought I, I agree with you that the first couple songs were definitely better than the last half of the album and i don't know if that's because like the first ones they hit you first with that style like if you would listen to it from back to front maybe the back half might sound better to you you know what i mean but um i don't know i thought it was pretty good though despite the yeah like length (laughs) i think what it needed was it needed like features or something because like he could not carry this whole right like he like he He's not good enough of a rapper to carry the whole record. Like, basically by himself. Like, M.E.D. has that one vert. Like, how many features is there? There's, like, M.E.D. and then, like... There's, like, three. Wild Child is, like, on the... No, there's... Oh, yeah. And there's someone on Discipline 99, Part 0 and Part 1. And also, his vocals, he just does the same... The same trope because he has that vocal that... What is that? Like, just, like, high-pitched. Mm-hmm on his voice for the whole time I, and it never switches I, up i didn't ever. really understand it uh the parts where he went back like from the high pitch to just like his regular voice did you guys yeah. catch that too yeah i didn't really get what he was trying to do with that i didn't think it really added anything and more kind of just pulled me away from the song and like i don't know i just it just didn't rock with me yeah he because he he would because the idea i think is that he's like lord quasimodo or whatever like that's like a different person but it's like it's just such a stupid like it's like eminem and slim shady like jay-z and hope it's like so overdone it's like who cares it's like the same thing and it wasn't like he was like being i guess he wasn't trying to go for that too much because he wasn't like oh like lord quasimodo's like evil or whatever like he's mad he's like a savage and then that looks like regular it was like he was just basically the same and he didn't really rap as like his regular voice he just kind of said yeah um, I actually really, one thing that I do like is the, I think the production overshine the rapping, which I feel like is a little obvious, mm-hmm. but, uh, I really <clears> like <throat> the mixing of the whole album, uh, the high pitch where he kind of just 
sounds like he's rapping kind of like this into the mic. I really yeah. like that. I think it added more like grit and yeah. dirtiness to, uh, towards the album. Yeah, he, he like kind of floats over the mix. Yeah, because it's like, because all the, the drums and like the samples are all like mixed, like really fuzzy and like dirty, like jazz. Like it sounds like it's a record playing. There's like dust like all over it. And then his voice is kind of like this weird sort of dusty, but it's like high pitched. Yeah, I think that is, I mean, that's basically like the whole gimmick of the whole, yeah. But I think it works. Yeah. Like, I think the, that's the what makes it, works. that's not what, ma that's what makes it com not completely unbearable with how sort of samey the flows are, for me at least. I, I, actually, I don't know, something, it, I don't know, it just doesn't wear totally thin on me. I guess it's because I don't listen to like jazz rap as much. Like if I were to listen to like a modern trap album and it's like all basically like a young Doug clone for like <laughs> 20 songs, it's like that, just, I don't know, that's like way more a break or like just is way more annoying to me because I mean, you know, the thing is you can't, you can't really take away from him that no one, like, have you ever heard a song like, or another album like this? Like, like no one really does this. He's original at least. That's fair. Uh, I, I feel like the skits were a little too much as well. Um, off first listen, I was I didn't really mind that, but off second listen, there was they're getting to me. I was kind of like, okay, I get it with the skit after every song, or like having one verse and then going to a skit with a total of like a two minute song. It was just it, I didn't yeah. I wasn't a fan of that. Like on Jazz Cat, that was the one that had like it was called Jazz. Or no, that wasn't Jazz. No, what was the one where he went into the record store and he was just like talking to that guy? Was that like, him? Oh, that was Jazz sleepy. Cats. Oh, was it? Oh no, that was think, so yeah, that was Jazz Cat. He was like, oh, he got me in this. He just got me in this. He was just like name dropping jazz, like jazz. It was almost cringe to an extent. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. This, yeah. But I really like the like the rapping, and I like he was just showing off how much jazz he likes by just with his clever wordplay and rhyming rappers or jazz names. Um, I like that a lot, but just the skit is pretty much unbearable. <laughs> I mean, it's like, but but with how he uses the sampling, like in his regular music, along with he uses so many vocal samples, and they're like all stacked on top of each other, and then he uses his normal voice and his high pitched voice. He's which are also kind of characters. It's like he's just stacking all these vocal samples and all the, it's like they do have a cohesion to it, like with what they're saying mixed with the song, like I'm bad character. It's not like just random people saying, like they, I mean, it's a pretty simple idea, but they all mix together. But like when he just like keeps adding like all these vocal samples and then his regular voice and then his high pitched voice, it's like, you don't know what the, like, what's the point of this song? Like, I think it was called Astro Traveling or maybe Blitz was the one. I find myself enjoying the songs with a, a little bit of concept to them and more uh, like him kind of rapping towards something like in like in Jazz Cats or Bad Character. I really, when you were saying that um, nothing really stands out, one of the things that does stand out, the few things is the hook in Bad Character. Um, I really like the hook in that song. But other than that, it's it's pretty much just hit or miss. Yeah, I like what I, one what I, one one of the strongest songs I think was um, "Low Class Conspiracy." That was the yeah. one. It yeah. was like a story no, song. I have that on paper tracks. Yeah, because that one sounded that sounded like a tribe called Quest song almost. Which I hadn't even thought of that. Like it's been, like once that song came out, I was like, oh wait, he's kind of just ripping off like. Tribe Called Quest this whole way. He's not like ripping them off, but he's kind of like going, I didn't even realize like how much he was sort of going off their style to, an, to the extent that he was. Like Low Class Conspiracy sounded like completely, just like a- Yeah, definitely, like a pretty I hear cool, that now. Yeah, like- Especially Low in the verses. Yeah. But like it, yeah, like he really needed like Q-Tip, like he's Q-Tip and then he needed like Life Dot, like he needed someone else. And he needed to bring more story songs like, low class and like getting pulled over it's like probably that's like a common i feel like trope in like new york hip-hop and stuff or like it's like old school hip-hop but i think he does it well on that song low class and is a good one scott what are your thoughts what are your favorite ones um i thought return of the loop digger was really cool um the skit in that one was fine to me i thought what was but, in that uh, one i don't remember i th Hang on, let me... Oh, but that one, he was in, like, the record store, right? I'm getting it mixed up with Jazz Cats. The, yeah, yeah, You're talking yeah. about the scare, right? Yeah, like, I, I, like the first listen, you're right, like, it was, it was kind of, I thought it was kind of funny. 
Um, but I, I don't know. I thought like the the sampling on that one was well done, obviously because he's trying to show off like he's he's crate digging and finding all these crazy different uh, artists to pull from for his records, which I thought was pretty cool. The one yeah, I didn't that... really like was Astro Traveling. I don't know. I listened to that one like the first time, and I was like, I don't really like it. It was just like he was just talking about smoking for three minutes and i was like okay <laughs> like yeah. it's like we get it, bro. We get it. Yeah. yeah i didn't i hated that one yeah oh put a curse on you that one was bad and come on feet <laughs> like yeah what? that was bad <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Come on, and you know what that had it had a fire sample though that had um that was uh black balloons reprise you know that one yeah, yeah Lilo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, it's like the slow, like droning, like steps or like clock. It sounded like that was a fire sample, and I didn't. I mean, you got it. Like Mad Libs, like sort of the master of jazz sampling. So you've got to think that there's like songs now where you hear the sample that he's already done. Yeah, but, like that was a great sample. But I mean, that song was like, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> like it's like th- he's if it, it's like, sometimes it seems like he just um. He just like records songs and then he's just like can't bear to throw one away. Like just like uh, like just yeah, get rid of that verse. Some fat on this album. Yeah. What? There's definitely some fat on this album. Yeah. Which is like, the biggest um downside. Yeah, come on feet, put a curse on you. And honestly, come on feet and put a curse on you, it's it falls short because not only is the idea of the song weak and like not exciting at all. But the sample that he bases it on is just so boring. And he doesn't bring a lot of life to it. Like on Come On Feast, like the guy just says it. And something like the record scratching isn't always enough. Like it's not, it gets a little annoying. Like the record, like it's just like the same vocal record scratch, record scratch pretty quick. Especially like if it's the like record, the record scratch on this album. I thought it was just right. It wasn't really overkill in my opinion. Yeah, it wasn't like, oh yeah. Cause if you listen to like 80s, rap like public enemy they're like od like the record scratch like that's like the whole song it's just the yeah, record it's, scratch. it's really just a staple of their like their time really you can't really get mad at the dj scratches i'm yeah i was they weren't overbearing only when the sample was just weak and like the, like there was no reason to like rehash it by scratching it or doing anything yeah it's weak as hell and there was another there was another song that had a sample that I recognized. Oh yeah, it was hard piano. You remember that song from Daytona? Yeah, up the push it to yeah. Yeah, that was on Realize. Is at the end of it. Did you guys like the interludes, like at the end of the songs? I like mm-hmm. when songs like flow together, personally. So like when there's like those little interludes, I think it it makes the album feel more like cohesive to me. But uh, what do you think, Carlos? I think I would have enjoyed this more if it like instead of just putting a random sample of like some movie or some whatever some guy talking it was some yeah. music that kind of combined the two together uh, throughout the whole record because i'm a big fan of that as well but yeah like he just, does that great on like pinata and stuff on pinata it's almost it's like almost perfect like even like on on, bandana yeah. too yeah like the sampling there it's it honestly it's really hurts him i think Looking back at it, like if you had never heard Madlib and never heard his style, and this is the first thing you heard, I feel like this would be like revolutionary. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, I feel like this would have so much more novel, or now it's sort of novelty. It'd have so much more. I feel like I would praise this so much more if I'd never heard that. He does it so much better, and it's so much more cohesive, and it just can't, like, listening to this, you can't help but feel. His sampling hasn't even, like, his sampling's already good on this record. It's not like his sampling got 10 times better the years like it was already good here also with the technology and stuff like won't be more crisp the recording and things but like hearing how incohesive it is it like really hurts now, do you think opposed. like yeah. for him looking back now after he's dropped like pinata and bandana do you think that he looks back on this like oh i could have done this now or i could have done like this better now if I, I think he just know. makes so much music like i feel like he doesn't care i feel like he <laughs> i feel like he listened to this album once and then just like was like all right this is kind of trash or something i feel like he said <laughs> something like that i've never even like seen him in an interview though like he yeah. doesn't do interviews like, yeah he's like 
avoids the public and stuff. Like, I think he had an interview for Bandana with Freddie Gibbs. And that was, like, his first interview since, like, 2000 or something. <laughs> like, he just never does interviews. Or, like, 2003 or something. It was, like, 20 years almost. Got in or something in the rap world. Um, I mean, uh, there's, like, a few more tracks I like. Like, what do you guys think of um, MHBs? I love that one. I thought that one was really good. I, I yeah. like the the idea and like the hook, but that's pretty much it. I didn't like the I hook. I, I, I like the Savage sample, song. bro. I thought the sample was crazy on that MHBs. Do you remember that one? It was kind of like ambient and more synthy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah I do. Um, that sample it wasn't was one of like my crazy. favorites. It just it it didn't really shine out for me that much. I think he has that better was, on yeah. this. What, yeah. Well. All right, so what were your guys' favorite samples on here? Because I mean, that's basically. Yeah, if you're coming to this record, like that's basically what you're looking for. There's not a, I mean, there's yeah. not totally a lot more that it has to offer. But what do you think? Or what were your favorite samples? Um, my favorites were um, Low Class Conspiracy, which we already talked about. Yeah, I agreed. Um, Return, Return of the Loop Tiga. I have Boom Star, um, Astro Black, not to be mistaken with Astro Traveling. <laughs> Astro Tra- yeah, Astro Black was good. Yes. Um, 24-7. Oh yeah, that's uh, with M E T. With M E T. Um, and then realize, which we we also mentioned before. Oh yeah, realize was a good one, and I liked I liked um he had a couple samples of like rappers too, like he had a Nas sample and like a Raekwon mm-hmm. Chef sample I think, which I let li- I liked the like Nas to like New York rap, because I because he never really samples rap, he mostly samples like movies and stuff or like yeah. I wonder if I there was like. Well, what do you think? What, what you I, I also like like a, a, I like those ones as well. Those are also my favorites. But I also liked um, microphone mathematics. I don't know. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, which is also one of his only singles for this album. So was that a single? Yeah. My th- personally, did you guys like Basic Instinct and Good Morning Sunshine? I think those were my favorites. Do you remember those? Uh, yeah, those didn't really shine up for me that much. I like the Good Morning Sunshine, like the vocal. I don't know. I thought it was funny, and I like Basic Instinct too. It had, it had a good. It was a, that was an example of a good um, vocal sample leading into it. I think it was something about like the meek shall not inherit shit because I'm gonna take it from them or something. That was a good one. I like oh yeah, yeah, it was a good intro. I like that one. Yeah, yeah but Basic favorite, Instinct yeah. was more of like an interlude, in my opinion. It was really like short. I got cut off. Um, at the right amount like at the right time oh i, I kind of got like bored of it really yeah, yeah. I, I like that one what about good morning sunshine did you like that one i thought that was decent i didn't really have much to say on that kind of just like a mid track i don't know i think he's cut out what else no uh, you you uh, said like something like oh shit or something yeah we couldn't <clears> hear you. yeah so someone gave me a facetime call sorry <laughs> <laughs> Final um, thoughts on the on the record? Oh, one more. All right, this is the one thing I wanted to mention. Uh, what did you think of the cover? Because it honestly, like, this is why I like picked this album. I love this cover. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, it reminded me of like, like just like two thousands cartoons on a Saturday morning. I don't know. That's what I got out of it. But yeah, it was pretty fire. I love that purple color. It just like uh, kind of. Wait, you mean the car? Wait, where's the purple? Yeah. Like the car, it's kind of like the purple pink. pink. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah, yeah. I think that color's fine. Bro, I love the cover. Oh, yeah, I, love I the, really like, like the cover. The, the gradient green. Uh, yeah, that's really such a close. weird color. Yeah. Uh, but like, it, it you, fits and it works. Yeah, you never see. Yeah, that's it, like green and like that green and yellow gradient seems like exactly like what his jazz like sound. I don't know. That seems like the color that comes to mind with his like sound, like yellow, green, like mucky, like dusty the guy's name who designed it was jeff jank so <laughs> <laughs> jeff jank. Does anything for he is fire and then i like how the road it's like all white like there's no road and an overpass all right yeah so what are your final thoughts um i mean overall i thought the sampling obviously was good it's by mad lib so it's gonna be good the rapping decent he's more of a producer obviously and overall i'd probably give it like uh probably say it is seven Oh, seven. All right, Carlos, you got it. Um, so going into this album, I wasn't really, I haven't really heard any Quasimodo at all. Um, but I do like his rapping style, even though it does get a little old. I, I, I 
still I'm a fan of it. Uh, the way he kind of skips over the beat. Um, I do enjoy, I think it adds like a little bit to the production, but overall the production just overshines his rapping like way, like way, way some. I really like the mix. The mix definitely helped uh, towards the album. Give me a more enjoyable listen. And yeah, I would probably, I think I gave it like a light, yeah, light seven, I would say. Light seven. So what I think, his flow got old. I think the biggest problem for me was the flow, less about the mix or like less about, I didn't get totally tired of the vocal, but I, I the flow, like he sort of had frequent pauses and like the end of lines, kind of seems similar like in how they ended up like how his cadence ended and they got kind of old quick i think it should have had more uh actual like instead of just sampling people and that kind of counts as his features i think he should have had actual features of vocalists i feel like vocalists could go well with him to mix with sort of like his really weird high pit like not rappers like i think vocalists could be interesting but yeah i thought the the drums weren't like totally crazy or like out of the world like that you might imagine but the sampling was and i think the the dusty mix was great too uh there's a lot of like forgettable hooks but there are some good ideas like there's some really strong ideas like better than rapper like better than any rapper could, or like the average rapper could say like low class conspiracy i thought basic instinct bad character and um mhb was great I actually liked the last song, the part, the Discipline 99 part one. I liked that one. I think he had, he had some sharp ideas, but yeah. So I would rate it. I'd rate it a low eight, bro. I rate it like 8.2, like 8.3. All right. I 8. mean, 2, 6. it's saying that Rhapsody ranked it as number seven on the best hip hop albums of the decade for like 2000 to 2010. Rhapsody? So, what is yeah. Rhapsody? It's a, like a, uh, is that the one that used to be Napster? Really? Top 10? Holy shit. That's crazy. Yeah. That seems high. All right. Well, I guess that's our thoughts. I guess the average out, it's like 7.6, 7.5. So, yeah. So that's pretty good. Pretty solid for a producer turned rapper. But, yeah. So that's a solid. Uh, solid oh, wait. Record. There are two different people? So the same person? Yeah, they're the same person. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, so hopefully we do this again. But yeah, that's Unseen, the review. All right. Excellent. Excellent.